Pictures, pictures, pictures. Yeah. Don't y'all want to do that afterwards? I'm doing video. Y'all go ahead. Oh, you're doing video? Yeah, okay. Get on with my sister. Uh, where you want, brother? But why don't we do this? You tell me, brother. Y'all can see them, right? Okay. The uh, marriage ceremony of all, of all the uh, activities in our church, all the services, all the events, uh, nothing is more holy than a wedding ceremony. All the revivals, all the worship times, all the Lord's suppers, all the baptisms are really, really great, but nothing is quite as holy as this wedding. And the reason is, is because this is the one relationship that the Lord compares that he wants to have with us, his church, his bride, and him being the bridegroom. And so I can say that about no other service that we have other than this one. So I want to get this one started right. Just have a word of prayer, and then we'll ask the Lord's leadership. Father, I thank you so very much that marriage was not created by man. We thank you that, Father, this event, this ceremony was designed by you. So we want to ask for your wisdom and your leadership and your guidance and direction. Would you anoint Brother Charlie with your insight and your spiritual discernment? Would you give him a heart to lead and to be a man of God, liken them to no other time in his life that he would be all you want him to be? Thank you for Charlotte. Bless her as well. Fill her with your spirit. Use her for your glory. And give her a heart to seek after you. Father, I pray that the covenant that Char Charlie and Charlotte joined today in making would last until Jesus come and bring glory to your name. Lord, we ask it all in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. <coughs> First wedding was not performed at a courthouse or a church building, but in a garden. And God did it himself. As a matter of fact, God was the first one to give a bride away. And so uh, this is not a covenant or a contract uh, that is only recorded on the legal bound, but there's a spiritual dimension, and uh, if this were a contract, it would be an if-then clause. Uh, Charlie would be saying, if, Charlotte, you do this, 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 and this, then I'll marry you, <laughs> or if, Charlotte, you would say, if, Charlie, you do this, 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 and pay all the bills, then I, then I would marry you. But, but that's not really what this is. It's more than a contract I would get from Dennis. If he paints my house, I'll pay. You know, that's the contract. This is a covenant. And a covenant is not an if-then, but an I will. And Charlie, by you being here before these witnesses today, you're saying I will give 110% to Charlie. And Charlie, you're saying the same thing to Charlie. So I will. It's a covenant. And it doesn't, it's not based on performance. You're not here today, Charlie, saying, I will marry and take care of Charlotte and treat her as my wife, uh, you know, uh, if she does okay. But it, it doesn't matter what her performance is. She can be the worst wife this side of the Pegasus River. But, but you, you have a commitment today. And the same thing you. I mean, see, that's the difference. It's, the Lord didn't save us. Say, Narada, if you don't sin anymore, I'll keep you saved. Well, he didn't do that, and I'm glad. So, so this covenant relationship is uh, really a special man. If you were a Jewish young man, you would have approached Mr. Griffin, and you would have said, I want to marry your daughter. And uh, he would make a commitment to you that that, if that would be okay with him. Uh, he would ask, what could you pay? You would pay the largest amount of money that you would pay for anything. No house would come close to no car, nothing. It would be the largest endowment you could possibly pay. And then, if that was acceptable, then you would go to Charlotte and you would uh, tell, ask her, would you marry me? And if she agreed, then you and she would become betrothed or engaged. Is what you said. But... For the Jewish family, I mean, that engagement is just like a divorce. I mean, just like marriage. You, you, to separate, you'd have to divorce. It's legally binding. And so uh, you would make that commitment. And then you would immediately leave and go 
go right back to your father's house, Charlie, and be and maybe on the back side of your father's house or maybe on the back property somewhere, you would begin to build a bridal chamber for Charlotte. And it might take you a month, it might take you a year, but every day you'd work on that bridal chamber, getting it ready, and uh, your father would go out and look at it, you know, and, and he might make a suggestion, and, uh, you know, and then uh, that day would come that, you know, he would say, okay, it's ready, go get your bride. Uh, you wouldn't know when that day would come, huh? neither would she. And from the time you make a covenant with Charlotte and go back to build the bridal chamber, she and her maids of honors, and, and, and the, drive, the, the bridesmaids, uh, every day get up, five pounds of makeup, hairspray, all of that. You know? I mean, every day they get ready because they never know when you're coming. It could be today, it could be next week, it could be next month. And so, I mean, boy, they go to bed anticipating that the, that the best man's going to come in and say, the bridegroom coming. And that would be a Jewish wedding. And then the day would come, your father would say, your, your chamber's ready, go get your bride. And the wee hours of the morning, under the cloak of darkness, uh, you would come and get Charlotte. And before you would get to her house, your groomsman, your best man would run ahead. And just as you get to her house, he would shout, the bridegroom coming. And boy, they would jump to their feet and get ready. And then you and Charlotte would take off for seven days and then come back and have what we call a reception. That's how the Jewish custom is. That's exactly what Jesus did. He came, paid the greatest price for us, his bride, he could possibly pay. And that wasn't money, it was his life. And right tonight, this is what he told the disciples. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many rooms, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And it could be tonight. It could be a year from now. We don't know. But the bridegroom is, is anticipating the Heavenly Father saying, go get your bride, and we, the bride, are ready for that day. So this is a, wow, powerful event. Charlie, if you and Charlotte understand the spiritual uh, commitment and covenant you're making, then I would ask you to join my right hands. Yeah, you're at the right side. Y'all doing well so far. <laughs> God and the assembled witnesses that are here today promise to love and cherish sickness and health and prosperity and adversity this woman whose right hand you hold do you promise to be to her in all things a faithful husband to plead to her and only her as long as you both should now I plan here at this time to say kind of maybe Unequivocally, without qualm or reservation. Amen. 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 Do you, Charlotte, in the presence of God and these assembled witnesses, promise to love and cherish and sickness and health and prosperity and adversity this young man whose right hand you hold? Do you promise to be to him and in all, in all things a faithful wife? Lead to him and him alone with as, as long as you go so Amen. Charlie, what uh, token do you give? May I see? As you know, this is a special event. This ring in all ages and among all people has, has been a symbol of that which is measured. It is boundless devotion. It's a circle, and it's neither a beginning or an ending. It's ceaseless reminder of this sacred event of which you're about to make a commitment. Would you take that ring and place it on her ring finger? Repeat this after me, John. Repeat 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Mr. and Mrs. Charlie and Charlotte Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> you take your name. I guess I should do that.